So welcome, 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 Sarah. We so appreciate your consistent visionary leadership. And as always, it sets you begin all things by acknowledging our creator. We acknowledge all the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toil without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Sarah, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work with us? Thank you. Thank you, Victor. It's really good to be here. My name is Sarah Charters. I am the president of the United Church of Canada Foundation and the executive officer of philanthropy for the United Church of Canada. Um, we are really focused in the foundation, particularly also um, in the philanthropy team with building up communities of faith um, and supporting folks as they strive to live out God's mission in their context. And um, so that happens in a lot of different ways. The foundation has a, a granting program that's specifically targeted to helping uh, communities of faith explore what is needed in their context and then initiate um, innovative, unique projects and programs uh, to help them carry out that ministry. Um, and we um, work as collaboratively as we can, we want to be in partnership with the folks that we're supporting. We want to we want to understand what they're learning, what they're hearing, and 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 be able to share that more broadly within the context of the United Church and faith communities. Incredible, incredible. So, what's inspiring you right now in your work? What has you curious? When the pandemic started, there was this moment of collective intake of breath and thinking about what does it mean for churches who are so relational, who are so based on connection and being together with people to not be together? And what is that gonna look like in the future? What ramifications are that gonna have? Um, and I think what's intriguing me right now is the resilience that we're seeing and the drive for folks to really figure out what, what is their purpose now? What is God calling them to do? now um, and really thinking that through in very deep thoughtful ways and trying to be um, broader in their invitations and and spaces so that folks who have been isolated who still continue to grapple with all the residual effects that the pandemic has left us with provide spaces for people to connect safely and to to be in relationship and community and to have um, that faith grounding that so many people were looking for um, didn't realize they'd been missing until until the pandemic and and now are are trying to find those places for connection. So um, I'm intrigued and super grateful for for that resiliency um and the other thing that um is in that is intriguing me right now in the work is how people are are trying really to to do things differently um and so it's not that they're going back to the the way things were the same but but to find different ways of carrying out their work um and carrying out their their ministry Indeed, I can only imagine. Um, so much had to pivot, but I think that resilience, almost forced resilience, um, creates a dynamic where folks are testing muscles um, that they never had to test before, and, and it creates um, an opportunity. So, so I give thanks for your Absolutely. transparency and, and authenticity. Um, so my next question is, what challenges and barriers do you face in your work? And what are some of the approaches that junior colleagues are utilizing to um, overcome some of these challenges and barriers? I think um, what we see a lot of is a lack of volunteers um, and a lack of um, people stepping up to do things that were always done. And I, so, so that has huge implications on communities of faith, which, well, hopefully have some staff leadership also rely heavily, heavily on volunteerism to to do the day-to-day -day, uh, work. Um, and so 
one of the things we're doing is working with people to figure out how to make opportunities that are meaningful for people and that people feel they can contribute to that maybe aren't the same kinds of roles that people have traditionally played. Um, and, and to, as you were saying earlier, to sort of flex the muscles of invitation in a different way. Um, and so, so volunteerism is, is one big thing. Another thing um, that I come up against uh, as a barrier is, um, is risk-taking. And I don't mean just willy-nilly taking risks for the sake of taking risks, but you know, being really uh, calculating the risk. And, and being willing to uh, step out and say, yeah, we're gonna try this, or yeah, we're gonna do this. Um, and if it doesn't work out the way we think we, it's, we want it to, then we're gonna learn something. So to, to not see um, failure as a result, but to see that learning and to have the confidence to try and, and try again in some cases. So I would say those are the two big barriers we see right now. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate you. So do you have a set of key priorities in your work right now that you'd like to share or amplify? We we do. We are, uh, in the foundation particularly, we are focused on uh, reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. We are focused on anti-racism. Um, we are focused on care for creation or climate um, and communities of faith. And, and and support for them. Those are our, our four big priorities. And we see that in our granting, we see that um, in our investing and um, we're working to ensure that every uh, every meeting we have also has those elements in it. That's beautiful. Um, I, I, I couldn't uh, applaud you more. And um, when we look at the 94 recommendations from the TRC, um, also especially work around anti-racism and most importantly, um, just Asasiya, Mother Earth, or a care for creation, and what's going on in terms of climate action. COP is well, a few days away, um, so so definitely those are some really important some pillars. And once again, I appreciate your candor, transparency, and clear um, leadership in terms of those really important goals. So my next question is: How do you feel about the future of social innovation and communities of faith in Canada? I feel very optimistic about uh, the future of social innovation in communities of faith. I think, as with a number of things that the church does, it's been doing them forever, <laughs> uh, but but it hasn't been recognized as such. Um, you know, I think of churches um, starting up food banks, which then grow into things uh, that are that are bigger and and addressing um, the immediate needs as well as trying to address the underlying systemic issues. I think um, there are lots of folks with really good uh, intentions, really creative, who really want to do good work. And so I, I really do think that communities of faith have a real opportunity, if they're willing to take that calculated risk, to step out and, and really move into this, claim this space in a way they haven't... Um, so far. Incredible, incredible. Thank you. So what is your ultimate goal and what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues? For us, it's a vibrant and thriving church. That's what success uh, looks like for us. Um, and we would know that through um, a number of different ways. And I think I think we would see that in communities across Canada. Um, in a, in a variety of ways from people having uh, safe spaces to meet in to, to activism and advocacy work. Um, I think it looks like a much brighter future, if I can say it that way for us, uh, for us all, um, where folks are valued for who they are, where uh, faith can be lived out and, um, and, and where there is service in the community that makes a meaningful difference. I love that value for who they are, service to community. These are pillars that both my mother and my father embedded in myself and pillars that my wife and I embed in our children. So once again, thank you for that. We appreciate you. So do you have any closing thoughts or call to actions for our listeners and our viewers? I would say be bold. Be bold and be brave. And um, really 
gather folks around you who are going to lift you up and work with you and want the best for you and and be creative and take take work and and love forward ashe amen i mean thank you so much sarah for your leadership for your consistent solidarity and for all that you do for so many and we'll close this interview the way it began by acknowledging our creator by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on, we acknowledge all our ancestors. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and work towards our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Sarah. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>